everyone, it is Diane here from Deco Easy. Jen and I are super happy that you came over to watch another home decor video. Let's start crafting and see what we're going to make today. Okay, to start off with the DIY, we have branches. Um, these I found outside. You can see my hands are still red because it's pretty cold and wet. So um, yeah, I'm going to cut the biggest one into two and then the other one here. Uh, will be the third one so I make one bigger branch out of three separate smaller branches but first they have to dry so I think I'm going to put them on the heater or yeah if you have an oven and you want to put it in there that is also an option on a low temperature like 50 degrees uh, Celsius then um, but I think a heater is a better option for me because I have such a small oven that is not going to fit I also discovered that putting them on kitchen towel before and then pressing, you know, like this together, that works pretty well too to get off the worst moist that the branches contain. Okay, the sticks are drying and in the meantime, I think I'm going to make uh, the other half of the DIY. Therefore, you need just a blank sheet of paper and we fold it in half because we're going to make, well, yeah, patterns actually, molds. Don't know how you say that. For the DIY, you also need a pair of scissors. And then you can just start cutting out the shapes of leaves. Oh, there's a start here. Just like that. This is okay. Or you just use, uh, let me say, some more of this shape. Make it bigger if you want to. Just like that. And then you have this leaf, or this shape of the leaf, or you just hold this one beside it. Here. You see, lay it upon it if you want to. Just make the whole thing bigger you can easily rip it off like so and then you have several shapes of leaves personally i think these are cute uh compared to the size of the stick but you can also make smaller ones that is totally up to you now let's continue okay i have the templates ready for the feathers and now I'm going to put these aside. I don't think I'm going to use these. I think these were too small, but definitely going to use these two. Um, and now we're going to cut off some old jeans. Now, the important thing is that you um, have to look how the jeans are sewed or actually woven. Um, there are these ways. So I have to put the templates like this because I'm going to ruffle it up. And then ruffling it up this direction won't help because all the stripes are going this way not this way so that is why this is important and then you can ruffle up from both of the sides i'm going to cut open a part of the jeans well let's say i'm going to cut it off here goodbye jeans and this feels really weird, cutting in clothes, because mom always told me not to do. I once cut a hole into a very expensive shirt as a small child. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't a really good idea, so this feels really weird, but these are old jeans, so no big deal. Okay, let's put that one aside. So we just have some part here. Now I'm going to cut, cut open this and uh, yeah, I think we're going to cut off this too. Or let's first say do it this way. If there is a stiff pattern, yeah. On the back, that was a sewed part. Now here it goes easier. Okay. Now. Cut it open along this line here. Check, yes. This is okay. And then we can just start 
turning it inside out because I'm going to draw with a marker on the inside so I know where to cut. What was I saying? Yeah, this way. Okay, let me grab a marker, pull it tight, and then we're going to just draw around all these leaves. Okay, now I got myself a silver marker, and it worked because I tried. Um, and why a silver one? Also important to draw on the inside of the jeans, not on the outside, so it is going to be the back part. Um, because hopefully can see the ink doesn't leave that much yeah it doesn't make such a big contrast like black or anything upon the fabric of the jeans okay I have a few here let me just cut out a few for you. Well, actually, let's just cut this whole part out of the jeans. That makes it easier. Here we have one leaf. I'm carefully going to turn it over and try to ruffle it up by pulling parts off with my nails. But it really depends on how your jeans have ensued or sold, or I don't know how to pronounce it, but I bet you know what I mean. Um, mine are really different than the example that I got my inspiration from. People are doing something else with old jeans. Oops. So yeah, look what works for you here. You can see me pulling off the string and that really gives it the ruffle effect. But might work different on yours, so try that out before cutting everything off. So I'm going to keep myself busy for a while, but you can see the effect here a little bit on how it could look like. Okay, I was quite struggling, I'll make a really close up, with how to remove or make the, the fringe here. Now what I did, uh, I'm going to turn it over because first, you can see all the lines, um, first I glued down a piece of twine, just used hot glue, and the thing is, if you want to leave uh, a blue tassel here, then you should remove these white uh, what do you call them? White threads here. Now, of course, for the camera, this... Yeah, here it goes. Look. Just like this. Just pull them loose until the end here. And then you cut them loose. Oh, I got an email. Just like this. And yeah, you can continue. Sometimes you're lucky and you can grab multiple of these. Well, you can also do it like this. Just pull till the end and uh, just cut everything at once there and then yeah there are two here this is by the way the best way I could film it for you <laughs> and they seem to be doing weird along this part here but that is how you should do it and then you get this effect here look all the tassels here and there so just like that just remove Carefully, piece by piece, these white threads here. That's what gives the effect to your DIY. Okay, let me show you what I just did before. Now I lost my... Oh, <laughs> it fell down to the floor. Just take a piece of twine. Then you start gluing this because it's going to be leaves. Just glue the inside in a straight line here this will be the leaf and then quickly press down you can use scissors or those protectors for your fingers 
Well, there is a little bit of an end here, but no big deal. Let the glue cool down before you burn your fingers. And then you can also see, already see it here. I tried to do a little part. Um, we're going to tear up the white threads. Now what I do here along the edge here, maybe I'm going to show you just up in a close up. That will be better. Just one second. There we are from the other side. To tear up these, well, the beginnings, just pull here alongside the edges and then you might be lucky here you can see it to rip down some of the white threads of course when I do it for the camera it always goes wrong helping uh, using tweezers may help too not okay yeah there it goes you can just pull out like this the white threads. Sometimes you get a real bunch of it at the same time. There it goes. Just like that. Just pull it down. Oh. <laughs> the camera fell over. Why is it always happening to me? Okay, there we go. Just pull like that. And then you get the effect that you want, just like that. Okay, I'm going to make all the other feathers just the same way. I also discovered that when you pull from here, from the beginning, and you lay it down flat, that you can just pull this way, and then you get the thread out. Yes, it might take some time. So if you're lazy, then I suggest making the leaves uh, as big as possible. And if you want to make them smaller, that is totally up to you because I can tell you this is really calming work to do. Actually, some sort of mindfulness, you almost may call it that way. So I'm going to continue making some more leaves. And if I have enough, then I will be back at you. Just pulling out those threads. It's a very calming way to maintain the day. Good morning everyone. It is the next day and I am ready with all the feathers and it was quite a lot of work. I totally underestimated how it would look like. I made three different feathers. Small round ones. These are a little bit, yeah, different flat here and more round there and I also made two bigger round ones so you can uh, you know have a little bit different sizes and shapes that you could use now it is time to attach these to the branches and therefore I have these big branches um, and I want to well let's say just lay them down like this and then with twine bind the uh, ends together. I uh, also tried to, to clean them a little bit with a sponge I took off most of the moss because that is some gross stuff and you really don't want that in your home. So let's just pull this together with some twine. Uh, I don't think I will be using glue only um, a knot will be enough and then we're going to attach the feathers to the branches. So Put them together and I'll let me grab a piece of twine. Like so, and another one for the other side. Like that. Yeah, really easy. You just lay down one and just wrap around a few times. And then you can make the knot. Um, I think this will be the back side. So I'm going to try if I can move the knot to the back side. You know, like this will do. And I'm going to make just a double knot, a cut of the edges because they are on the back side. Or maybe just not cut off the edges yet. You might still need that. No, not going to pull too tight, just a tiny little bit. 
and that will do the other one as well. Are they a little bit on the same height? I think so. Then just hold the twine with one hand and start wrapping around the other end. And then you can make a knot here as well. A double one, don't pull too tight. You might need to get it loose if you want to hang it up or something. There we are. Easy as that. I arranged everything in the right place, but I'm still missing something. I thought for a while and now I know what it is. I want to use some beads. I have just, oh, this is so sort of such shit that was in there to catch all the moist. Um, just wooden beads from Action. I think this whole can was one or two euros. Well, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, yeah, eight pieces. One for each. This one goes back in. And they are a little bit too pale. Um, so I think I'm going to get some piece of cloth and make them be wax. So let's go. Here is some cloth that I, as you can see, have been using for more than one time. Now, very easy. You just dab your cloth inside of the jar with the bee wax. Oh, there is a lot of bee wax on edges where I don't want it to have. And now you can just dab around and give the bead the color that you want. The advantage of using cloth to apply bee wax is that um, you know, it is dry much, much faster than when you use a brush because on the brush you just simply use a lot of more bee wax and the wood doesn't absorb it that, that well. So just here on the corner there is a lot of bee wax. I'm just going to dab the corner and then wipe it away with the center of the cloth. Now I'm going to give them all a nice darker color for the extra farmhouse look. Just like that. And look what a difference this gives than the non be waxed bead. All the beads are now waxed. Time to put them upon the strings. So just take a piece of twine. And then the whole thing won't stick through. Let me help it with the scissors. Sometimes it needs a little push. Yeah, there it is. And just pull them down until that. And that gives nice, well, almost you could say bohemian look, but I think it's bohemian farmhouse. So sometimes, depending on the thick thickness of the thread, you can just use a tool like the tips of the scissors to help you get it through. So just continue until all the feathers are with a bead. the feathers have a bead. Now it is time to start arranging the whole thing. Let me put it away a little bit because all these threads are a little bit annoying. Now this is the back side so I'm going to glue from the back side. Um, I have the hot glue gun here. Now don't forget of course to turn around your feathers so the back side should be on top. Otherwise, you glue them in the wrong direction, and that is not what we want today. And then you can just start putting some glue upon the branch or upon the twine. That is up to you which part you want to glue. I have the arrangement here ready. A little bit more downwards. Some pieces of the twine were really stubborn, and they tear a little bit apart when I tried to apply them. 
Okay, now let me just start off with the first one. White pudding. Um, let me see. Yeah. On this branch here, a dot of glue. Oh, <laughs> the glue stick is empty. <laughs> oh, sorry. Here I am, back with glue sticks. It was a little bit too early. <laughs> Okay, so just push one back in. Now I can start gluing. Like I said, put a dot of glue on the back side of the branch. It can be quite a dot. And then just put the thread in from the twine. Now I need to let it cool down, so I'm gently pushing it in with the scissors. And when the glue has been cooled down, you can just remove the whole branch. I um, think I'm starting working from the outerwards to the inwards part so that the whole thing is divided hopefully nice and evenly throughout the branch. So now I'm going to move over this side, applying some glue. I'm just randomly hanging these up. Pushing the twine really into the hot glue. And this one isn't transparent, look, I can already touch the glue, so this one hasn't cooled down. And then I can clip off or cut off the excess piece of twine without damaging the craft. Just like so. And now we're going to work away inwards to the rest of the DOI. This is it. I think it looks super cool. Um, the only thing we need to do is fix the back part. This is the ugly side. Because I said don't um, pull these strings too hard yet. I'm going to cut off two large pieces of twine. So we can the whole thing, uh, we can hang it up for the window or wherever you want to. I'm now ooh, taking one thread and carefully, well, let's say this one here, pull one loose, only one knot. I made a double knot here. And then we need to find the center of the twine, which is here. So I'm going to keep that one and lay it down on the one knot and then Tie the knot two times more, or just use glue if you want to. That is up to you. And now you can pull it really tight. Tight. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, and then you have a string where you can hang it up. Make also sure that you trim the ends of the knot. Do not cut, of course, the good part, and then you can hang it up like this. And here you see the final result. I hang it upon my cabinet. And I think that looks super cute. Just pull the two strings on the top towards each other and then you get this result. Let us know in the comment section what you think and I can give you one advice, don't underestimate this tassel making part here. It looks really high end, it looks super cool, but it takes some time. And uh, yeah, it was totally worth it. It was a really nice thing to do and I had much fun. I hope you had fun watching too. That was it for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Jenny and I hope that you had fun watching and we hope to see you next time. Bye, everyone.